because everything is so accessible so instantly, I spend, it's like you're endlessly, I think in the mid 90s, the way people felt about going to the video store, like to rent a video and you're like, oh my God, I can't get out of here in under an hour and I'm picking everything up and it's like, I'm, and you're going through not only anticipation of pleasure, but also self-judgment for, I never did watch Raging Bull. I should take that home tonight. No, but I really don't want to watch it. I want to watch, you know, uh, Worms or whatever, like the, um, yeah. you know, and, 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 but I find that that's what my experience of being on Netflix is. I can spend an hour just looking at what's on Netflix <laughs> and not watching it. Just like, you know, reviewing titles and being like, oh yeah, oh, yeah. eight and a half, <laughs> yep. I don't know, I'm not gonna watch that. I don't, I, like, it's just, just kind of like looking through Eating things the menu. And adding things to your queue, but not actually doing anything about it. You're like, oh good, all the Mike Lee, I'll put all of those on my queue. And it makes you feel like you've watched them, but you haven't. It's like buying books at a bookstore. Just because you bought Moby Dick doesn't mean you've read it, but. Um, it's there. It's there. I think in that way, like experience, ex like the experiential quality of actually watching a movie or reading a book or listening to an album will become um, the thing that is actually rare because I think, you know, the ability to name drop things is not, um, act it actually has no value. Um, but, it, but it feels like with all the information aggregated um, that you can have, all this experience with art that is not actually consuming it at all. So what happened, I mean, I want to come back to this idea of DV or HD or mm. chasing the gold standard of film. Right. And having this idea of it as rogue or independent. Right. They yeah. can be like Hollywood standard, right. independent movies. Right. And there's something lost and gained and gained and lost in that. I don't know how I feel about all yeah. of it. I do kind of have a distaste of things that pretend to be something else. Okay. Um, like on an iPhone camera, they have all of these applications where you can take a picture and then you can make it look like uh, Polar. Polaroid or something else. And I think I have a natural inclination to say, yes, but it's not a Polaroid. So I don't like it as much, but I don't know why I have an affinity to feeling like it needs to be the thing that it is. A kind of authentic connection. Right. And I think that there's something just as authentic about digital, but I think it should be honest about the fact that it's digital. Right. Um, but I just finished shooting a film that I wrote where um, it's, we, we shot it digitally on the Canon 5D and we're going to process it. We're going to do this process with it so it'll look like Woody Allen's Manhattan, which is the <laughs> Just opposite. Just like that. that when, I mean, it's true. It's like amazing. It has that kind of like the way like those, those blacks are really deep so that even when a person's face is in shadow, you can kind of feel. Detail. Yeah, the detail. In, contrast, contour. Right. But it will be, it's faked. It, we didn't shoot it on 35 millimeter black and white, but we will be able to create the effect of it, which I kind of feel uncomfortable with, but also kind of looks great.